dear students today we will be discussing numerical problems to strengthen the understanding of the content what we have discussed in the last three classes so let us take first example it is something like find the ideal fuel cell voltage at no load and maximum efficiency for the direct methanol fuel cell. What flow rate in kg per hour of methanol and oxygen would be required to produce an electrical power output of 200 kilowatt. And additionally, we need to find out the rate of heat has to be removed from the cell. Okay? So, first let us write down the electrochemical equations for this direct methanol fuel cells at anode and I can write anode reaction it is like methanol reacts with water it forms carbon dioxide plus proton and then we have equal number of electrons right and in cathode reaction we will have oxygen it is 3 by 2 oxygen plus proton plus electron it transforms to water in the liquid form. Okay? And if we are interested about overall reaction, overall reaction we can write something like this methanol CH3OH reacts with oxygen what we will get is carbon dioxide plus 2H2O. Okay? This will be in liquid form. Right? Also, we need some of the information to solve this problem like what is Gibbs free energy at standard test condition? That means Z or I can make delta Z dot which is equal to minus 39.59 kilo calorie per mole. Okay? And this value is at standard condition. standard condition and this signifies the change in Gibbs free energy right and the same time also we need to know what is the change of enthalpy which is represented by delta H naught is equal to minus 56.8 kilo calorie per mole. Okay. So, this is change in Gibbs free energy and delta H is change in enthalpy. Right. So, we can convert these values from kilo calorie to kilo joule as well. So, if we do this then our delta z value will be something like minus 39.56 multiplied by 4.18. So, then it will be something like we have delta z will be minus 
kilo joule per mole and delta H naught will be if we do the same exercise like minus 56.8 multiplied by 4.18 it will be something like minus 237.54 kilo joule per mole. Okay. So, here in this case what we need to do we need to take help of first law and second law of thermodynamics. So, first what we will do we will try to find out the maximum power output. Okay. So, in order to find out this maximum power output we first start with uh, our first law of thermodynamics after neglecting say I will write after neglecting neglecting kinetic energy and potential energy of flow stream we can write the first law of thermodynamics at constant temperature and pressure for a closed system delta W is equal to delta Q minus delta H. Okay. We can represent this equation as 1. Now, for delta W to be maximum maximum the process must be reversible right the process must be reversible ok. So, for this condition if we write the second law of thermodynamics for a reversible process second law for a reversible process delta Q is nothing but T into delta S. Okay. This equation may be we can write as 2. Here we must know T is constant. Right? Now, if we use this expression in equation 1 we can write equation equation 1 implies delta w is equal to I will substitute this delta q value here then we can do something like this delta h minus t delta s okay again we know gibbs free energy Gibbs free energy expression energy expression which is represented by Z is equal to H minus T into S. Okay. And if we are interested about change in Gibbs free energy then it will be change in enthalpy and then change in temperature and entropy. So, we can split into something like this minus S into delta T. Since it is a constant temperature process, so this part can be neglected. So, what remains is delta G is equal to delta H minus T into delta S. Okay. So, again I can write delta G is nothing but delta H minus T into delta S and this may be equation number 4. Right? Now, if we see this equation 3 and 4 what you can write from equation 3 and 4 we can write delta w which is nothing but delta w max is equal to minus delta g right. So, this may be equation number 5. So, we need to find out this delta 
w maximum ok. Also if we use this expression in the earlier expression then we can write delta q is equal to delta h minus delta z. So, this will also be requiring for solving this problem right. Now, what we will calculate is the electrical power output per mole of fuel consumed. So, what will be the electrical power output? So, electrical electrical power output per mole of methanol consumed methanol because here fuel is methanol ok. So, this will be something like delta W max is minus del Z which is nothing but we have minus minus 165.48 kilo joule per mole. So, this will be W max will be 165.48 kilo joule per mole ok. What does it mean? This means 165.48 kilo joule electrical work is produced from a mole or say per mole of methanol ok and about 3 by 2 moles of oxygen. So, what we will do now 1 mole means how much gram that we will see first then we will go to the next phase of the problem right. So, I can write here this means 165.48 kilo joule of electrical work is produced from 1 mole ok. 1 mole means this is methanol right CH3OH. So, if we have to find out this molecular weight it will be something like 12 plus 3 plus 16 plus 1 which will be equal to 32 gram ok of methanol methanol and 3 by 2 mole of oxygen mole of. So, that means for oxygen it is 3 by 4 3 by 2 mole means 1.5 multiplied by 16 into 2 16 into 2 gram right. Also we can say that about 165.48 kilowatt electrical power is produced from flow rate of 32 gram per second and about 48 gram per second of oxygen that means 32 gram per second of fuel and 48 gram per second of oxygen right. So, if I say again like these are very interesting 165.48 kilowatt. So, here we are seeing kilo joule and here we have kilowatt electrical power is produced from flow rate flow rate of 
थार्टी टू ग्राम पार सेकेंड अफ फुएल दैट इज मिथानल एंड फोर्टीट ग्राम पार सेकेंड अफ अक्सिजेन ओके नाउ व्हाट यू उल डू उल फाइंड आउट द फ्लोर एट ऑफ मिथेनॉल फॉर द इलेक्ट्रिकल आउटपुट ऑफ 200 हंड्रेड किलो वाट बिकज इन द प्रब्लेम इट इज गिवेन दैट व्हाट उल वि द फ्लोर एट ऑफ फुएल एंड अक्सिडाइजार फॉर 200 हंड्रेड किलो वाट केपासिटी फ्यूल सेल प्लान दैट आर सल्व दिस पार्ट नम्बर वन इज रिक्वायर्ड फ्लोर एट फ्लोर एट ऑफ मिथानल मिथानल फॉर इलेक्ट्रिकल आउटपुट ऑफ 200 किलोवाट ओके सो दिस विल बी समथिंग लाइक फॉर 32 ग्राम पर सेकेंड we need about 165.48 kilowatt okay now for 200 kilowatt it will be something like 32 divided by 165.48 multiplied by 200 okay so this will be about 38.67 gram per second so in order to convert from gram per second to kg per hour then what you need to do 38.67 here is 3600 and here we will have 1000 okay so 1000 gram is 1 kg and 3600 second is 1 hour so that means this has to be multiplied by 3.6 so this will be about Hundred and thirty-nine point two three kg per hour. Okay, so this is the flow rate of methanol required for an output of two hundred kilowatt. Okay, now we will calculate the oxygen required required flow rate. of oxygen for the electrical output of 200 kilowatt so it will be something like 48 divided by 165.48 multiplied by we have 200 right so this will be something like we have 58.013 gram per second so we can convert it to kg per hour so the similar way it will be something like 58.013 multiplied by 3.6 so it will be something like 208.84 kg per hour okay so up to this we have done now what we need to find out is the methanol produced and then finally we need to find out what is the maximum efficiency and then emf values so again we can use the earlier expression like delta q is equal to delta h not minus delta g not right so these values are known to us can substitute this minus 56.83 minus 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 plus it will be 39.59 it will be in kilo calorie we will find out first 17.24 kilo calorie per mole okay so what does this minus sign indicates this 
negative sign indicates that the heat is removed from the cell and transferred to the atmosphere. part to the atmosphere. Okay. That means, one mole is nothing but 32 gram of methanol produces how much is the heat minus 17.24 or 17.24 kilo kilo per mole. Okay. We can also write this statement like 1 mole which is equal to 32 gram okay, methanol, methanol produces seventeen point two four kilo calorie of heat. Okay. So, we need to find out how much heat will be generated if we talk about 200 kilowatt of fuel cell plant. right? So, now we are interested about fuel consumption rate. Okay? So, how to do that? The fuel consumption fuel consumption rate for 200 kilowatt electrical power generation power generation is how much it will be 38.67 gram per second. So, the consumption of fuel at the rate of 38.67 gram per second produces heat at a rate of 38.67 right multiplied by let us calculate 17.24 divided by 32 right. So, maybe I will use the next page. consumption of fuel at the rate of 38.67 gram per second produces 17.24 rate of 17.24 multiplied by we have 38.67 divided by 32. So, it will be something like 20.83 kilo calorie per second. Okay. Now, we are interested about the amount of fuel required. right? We are interested about oxidizer required. So, fuel required already been calculated this is 20.83. So, now we are interested to calculate the required heat removal rate from the cell. The required heat removal rate from the cell at the electrical output of electrical output of 
200 kilowatt. Okay. So, this will be equal to 20.83 kilo calorie per second. Right. So, this is the heat which has to be removed from the system. Right. Now, we need to calculate what is the maximum efficiency. So, this maximum efficiency expression is known to us, it is something like delta G by delta H. Okay. So, if we substitute these values, then it comes out to be 69.66 percentage. Okay. And when we are interested about EMF values, that is at ideal cell voltage for ideal cell voltage. We know the expression E, which is equal to minus delta Z by n into F. Okay. So, here in this case, n will be 6, right? Number of electrons transferred, and F is Faraday's constant, and delta Z is the Gibbs free energy sense. So, this will be something like 165.48 into 10 cube divided by 6 into Faraday's constant is 96500. So, if we solve this problem, then what we will get 2858 volt. Okay. So, this is the ideal cell voltage. Normally, its value varies from 0.3 to 0.5, but here we are very close to 0.3. Okay. So, these are the parameters what uh, we are needed and we have solved in this problem. So, first thing what we did per mole how much amount of heat is generated that we have calculated then for uh, 200 kilowatt how much heat is to be dissipated that we have calculated. Also, we have calculated the maximum efficiency and ideal cell voltage of a direct methanol fuel cell. Now, move on to the next uh, problem. So, this problem is related to the calculation of cell voltage of a fuel cell at standard temperature and pressure conditions. So, here we have to use Nernst equation for calculation of this cell voltage. So, when we talk about standard condition, so it is at 0 degree Celsius and 1 atmospheric pressure. And at this condition, so I will write here at standard standard temperature and pressure at 0 degrees C and 1 atm. The standard free energy that is Gibbs free energy energy is represented by is delta G dot for hydrogen oxygen fuel cell delta Z not value is minus 237.13 kilo joule per mole. Okay. And as I said the cell voltage which is represented by E cell can be calculated calculated by using Nernst equation.
Lorentz equation. So, this equation is something like this E cell is E cell not minus R t by n into f multiplied by L n cube. Okay. Question number 1. So, here I will just write some important points E cell not is standard potential, standard potential which is equivalent to the standard reduction potential of the cathode minus the standard reduction potential of the anode okay? and R is the gas constant. So, each value is 8.314 joule per kelvin mole it's gas constant 8.314 joule kelvin mole and T is the temperature temperature in kelvin and N is the number of electrons number of electrons transferred in the reaction transferred in the reaction so in case of hydrogen oxygen fuel cell the value of n is 2 okay so n is 2 in this case and F is Faraday's constant, Faraday constant. So its value is about nine six four eight five coulomb per mole. And Q is reaction quotient. So, this uh, has to be calculated uh, based on the stoichiometric coefficient and then we have concentration. Okay? Just for your understanding, I can uh, give an example. Say for example, A is the stoichiometric coefficient for this element and B is the stoichiometric coefficient small b for this chemical element and the product is something like this. C sorry C C C C and then small d d. So, these are the products and this is the reactant and these are the stoichiometric coefficients right. So, how this Q represents it is something like we have product side this concentration and then the small c will be at the top and d is the concentration the small d capital A is a small a and then capital B small b. So, that is how we calculate this Q value and also we can relate this Q with equilibrium constant. Okay? We will learn what happens if these two values are different and if these two values are equal. Right? So, if this Q is greater than K that means equilibrium constant then reaction that's reaction from reactant and if q less than k then reaction from product and if equal q is equal to k then it is in, it is in equilibrium equilibrium right and here k is the equilibrium constant right now let us go back to our hydrogen oxygen fuel cell reaction so it is like 2 h2 which is in gas reacts with oxygen also gaseous form 
then it transforms to H 2 O then it will be in liquid form right. So, the standard reaction potential we need to find out it is investigated by different experiments the standard standard reaction potential potential is uh, we need to find out for another cathode say potential for say I will write cathode here cathode here reaction will be something like oxygen reacts with 4 proton and then will have oxygen ok. And for anode will have hydrogen, proton and electron transformed to hydrogen right. So, at the cathode this standard reaction potential is 1.23 volt but in anode it is 0 ok. That is how as a whole if we talk about the cell like the standard standard cell potential potential is E cell is equal to E cathode that is standard potential of cathode minus standard potential of anode ok. So, this value is 1.23 volt minus 0. So, finally, what we will have 1.23 volt is the E cell right. Now, we need to find out what is reaction cotent. So, at standard temperature and pressure the concentrations concentrations of the gases both hydrogen and oxygen will be something like hydrogen is 1 mole per liter and oxygen is like 0 0.21 mole per liter. This from where this 0 0.21 came? From air right. Since air is composed of 21 percent oxygen by volume ok. That is how this oxygen concentration is 0 0.21 mole per liter right. Now, we need to find out the reaction cotent. This Q is something like you have we remember this equation right. So, it is 2 H 2 O gas reacts with oxygen which is also gas what we will have is 2 H 2 O this is liquid right. So, here H 2 O will write and then at the top because this stoichiometric coefficient is 2 this is the product side and reactant side will have H 2 again sorry this is H this is only H 2 ok. Coefficient is 2 multiplied by we have oxygen and so on 
right. Normally at standard test condition Q is 0 because very minimum amount of water is produced in this reaction. So, that is how Q can be considered as 0 right. So, if Q is 0 then we can go back to the standard Nernst equation. So, what was the Nernst equation? It was E cell is E cell standard condition minus R T by N into F multiplied by ln of Q right. So, here already we have calculated what is E cell is 1.23 volt minus this R T R value is known to us 8.314 and this is 273.15 and is 2 here and value of Faraday's constant is 96485 and here ln of 0. Okay. So, now this value will be only 1.23 this is E cell right this is the volt. So, at standard pressure and temperature the cell voltage of hydrogen oxygen fuel cell is 1.23 volt which we have demonstrated now. So, now we will move to one more exercise. So, this exercise goes something like this an AM electrolyzer with 6 water compartment have the following specifications like electrolyzer type, then electrolyte, then dimensions, then weight, number of stacks is 7, number of plate is 43, then plate dimensions are given. 20 centimeter by 20 centimeter operating conditions are given operating current is 109. So, this is for 7 stacks and for single stacks it will be 109 by 7. Okay. So, that will be the ampere for single stack single stack okay. and operating voltage is 11.5 and power consumption is given here okay. and this stack of this AEM electrolyzer alkaline electrolyzer is looks something like this. Okay. So, this problem I have already exercised I uh, will show in the next slide what we need to do here we need to calculate hydrogen production rate efficiency capacity factor and cost of energy used and also for practical purpose in the problem data has been given something like for 20 ml of hydrogen production how much time is required. Okay. It is a average time people have done lot of work and then find out uh, they have calculated what could be the approximate time required to calculate 20 ml of hydrogen by using a EM electrolyzer. Let us solve this problem. So, here we need to combine two things first thing is like ideal gas equation and second thing is like uh, Faraday's law. So, how this can be coupled we can uh, demonstrate now. So, we know ideal gas equation P V is equal to M R T. Okay. So, if we use mole term then our things can be written something like RT by mu. Okay. So, this mu is like a molar mass of substance in gram per mole multiplied by T. So, here R is the universal gas constant. right? So, V will be something like uh, yeah, I can simplify more I am different way like m by mu is r by t. So, this m by mu is something like 
n okay so this is n then we have capital r n t right so this mu was like molar mass of substance in gram per mole right so if you know like uh, how many moles are there and then if you consider say for example if you consider this mass and if we know this no mass of this particle and then number of particles okay so m will be something like number of particles n multiplied by mu okay so this is how m has come so now this n will be something like m by mu right so that's how v is equal to n r t right again this expression can be modified like if we have to introduce faraday's law here then this m if we consider this m we can bring down m here then this will be something like q f multiplied by mu by z okay so here mu is molar mass of substance in gram per mole then q is the total electrical charge passed through the substance in coulomb and f is the faraday's constant and z is the valency number of the ion of the substance that means electron transfer per ion okay so if we couple this in this ideal gas equation then our expression will be v is equal to something like i multiplied by t then r t divided by we will have f z into p okay so this will be our expression for calculation of volume right so that is how we can write this expression here for both hydrogen and oxygen so this is the volume for hydrogen and this is the volume fraction for oxygen okay so this uh, hho means gas production volume and which is represented in ml right so if we do the calculations at standard condition like 1 ampere and for 1 minute then we can do the calculations and found this h uh, volume of the you know gas which is found to be something like this and uh, this is for per water compartment as in the problem it is given that number of compartment is 6 then if we multiply this then the, our uh, volume will be something like v h h o will be something like uh, we will have uh, of course we have 7 stacks so it will be something like 6.86 liter per minute okay and this is nothing but theoretical it's theoretical so in practical already it is given the values like uh, for practical or say real practical or real a real vhho that is gas production volume is something like 200 ml in 3.645 seconds. So, this will be something like 3.292 liter per minute. Okay. So, this is the real value and this is the theoretical value, right? So, if we are interested to find out the operating efficiency, then how we can do it? Like I am interested about uh, operating efficiency, operating efficiency, which is nothing but real flow to theoretical flow. This is real flow to theoretical flow. theoretical flow. So, here real flow is 3.292 and theoretical flow is 6.860. So, 
So, it is if you multiply it by 100, it will be like 48 percent. Okay. So, this is the efficiency. Now, what we are interested about calculation of capacity factor. So, this capacity factor can be calculated by using this expression where mmw is the milliliters per minute per watt and i is the current v is the voltage and t is the time. Okay. So, if we substitute those values and we can find out what is mmw right? and this is nothing but uh, the capacity factor and also we are interested to calculate the cost, uh, cost of energy generation. Okay. So, this can be calculated by using this procedure if we know p is a function of current and voltage that is power is a function of current and voltage and uh, we know the current of the stack is 109 and voltage is 11.5. So, this is the power value and energy charge can be calculated by using this data what we have presented before considering energy charge is 6 rupees per kilowatt hour that means per unit cost is 6 rupees. So, this is found to be this value. Okay. So, I hope uh, you uh, got some idea how to solve this kind of practical problems for designing a fuel cell as well as utilizer. So, thank you very much for watching this video. Thank you. Mm -hmm.